Welcome to our video on course design for EMI. This video will cover how to build and design an EMI course and strategies for teaching in an EMI course. A useful way of thinking about how to design your EMI course is to consider the concept of backward design. This video will also discuss how to implement EMI in your lessons. Backward design, developed by Wiggins and McTighe, has three stages. The first is to identify the desired results. Second, determine acceptable evidence. And third, plan learning experiences and instruction. So let's look at each stage in detail, and then we'll discuss how this process can be applied to you creating or revising a course for EMI. The first stage is to identify the desired results. The important thing here is to establish learning and teaching priorities. You can ask yourself questions such as, what do you want students to be able to do? You can also review curriculum expectations and consider if you want to include goals for students' English usage or communication skills, or only content goals. At this stage, it is better if you begin to consider student learning objectives. These objectives should be observable, meaning they can be seen in some way, and measurable, meaning you can gather data about how much students did or did not meet course objectives. After you identify desired results, you can determine acceptable evidence. That is a second stage. In other words, you want to decide what evidence is needed to determine if the goals and objectives are met. It's best if you use both formal and informal evidence. Formal evidence refers to grades that are recorded, such as a test. Informal evidence refers to in-class or out-of-class work that is not necessarily graded, but tells you how well students are doing. For example, if you ask a question during class and no one can answer it, that would be an example of informal evidence and would tell you that perhaps your students need extra support in this area. Of course, we don't expect perfection from students in their English. We don't need students to deliver perfectly constructed English sentences. We need them to show that they understand the content and will remember it for later. If they make mistakes with their English, that's okay and shouldn't be a problem as long as we can understand them. The third stage is to plan learning experiences and instruction. Questions to consider include what facts or concepts will students need? What processes, procedures, or skills will students need? What activities or materials will allow students to develop this knowledge and these skills? What will be the most effective teaching strategies, such as lecture activities, group work, and you can include a plan for helping students develop their English in your field. In stage one, you want to be able to complete this sentence. I want my student to be able to, and then the desired results. It might be that you want your students to be able to discuss in English industry requirements with experts, or you want your students to be able to write technical reports in English about a certain topic. Or you want your students to be able to read and discuss main points from technical reports in English. That's stage one. For stage two, you want to determine acceptable evidence. You can complete this sentence. Something will show me that students accomplished the goals for the course. These might be tests, group project reports or presentations, or individual reports or presentations. After you decide what evidence you need to determine if students have met course learning objectives, then you can decide what type of support or materials or experiences work best to help them. And that's stage three, or plan learning experiences and instruction. For this stage, you can consider something like this. In order to help students to do this thing, such as write a report in English, I need to blah, blah, blah. And here, you decide what you should do to help students accomplish stage two. You might give them certain lectures or have them interview experts in the field. But the point is that you are thinking about the end goal. What do students need to be able to do 
and what information or experiences do they need in order to help them meet those goals.